This is Just Nigeria coming up today. Sustaining Nigeria's aviation industry. We examine the critical need for bailout funds to revive the sector. Also, fit and fabulous. We'll meet the lady who lost over 20 kilograms of body weight in 90 days. And daring to be different. We meet the young lady working to make our dreams of becoming a mechanical engineer come true. Plus, my name is Jola Jai. I teach media and film production. Check me out. The filmmaker and powering artist to use art, design, and media to make positive change. Welcome to Just Nigeria, brought to you by the BBC and Channels TV, where we bring you the stories being talked about by you and I. I am Wali Fakile. Straight on to our top story for today. Nigeria's aviation industry was brought to a halt for three months due to the impact of COVID-19. Before now, the sector was already going through tough times. After domestic flights resumed in July, most airlines struggled to get back on their feet. To ease the losses, the government promised bailout funds to cushion the effect of the lockdown. But with the funds still in view, some airlines say they have been forced to lay off workers just to remain in business. So, how critical are these relief funds to reviving the aviation sector? Uh, Just Nigeria's Ajoke Ulotse tells us more. Now we, are, we don't have a job. Uh, you have mortgages, you have loans, you have families to look after and all that. Um, I just believe that it's, it's a whole... Um, we are, we are all devastated by it. On the 2nd of August 2020, Simon Issa, a Nigerian pilot, lost his job. He and 68 other pilots had their contracts terminated by their employer, Airpeace. The airliner blames the coronavirus pandemic for its actions, but Simon believes there may be more to it. When uh, we were about to start the post-COVID uh, operations, we had a meeting, so meeting with uh, the management and uh, chairman was in attendance where we could ask him various questions and uh, chat the progression and the expectation of the company for the next couple of months and all that and um, the company told us what they were expecting what they could offer and they told us they would offer 60 percent of what we used to earn uh, which was accepted by all and the hr sent a confirmation email uh, saying that 60% was what we were going to get and that some people were going to get 70% respectively. Um, once payday was approaching, we now got another email with the revised remuneration and that's what started uh, the heat and they started seeking the avenue to get to talk to the management again as uh, to tell them that uh, what was discussed is actually not what is uh, being offered and 60% uh, had some pluses in it that we actually make you in 20% at the end of the day. For months, COVID-19 brought on lockdowns and social restrictions, causing people across the world to stay home halting travel plans. To stop the spread of the virus, authorities shut air spaces, ground and air transport, a significant drive of economies. The expected loss of revenue by airlines, followed by a drop in passenger demand, may have caused companies to force employees to take pay cuts and unpaid leave. Also in the news was Bristol Helicopters. It made headlines after its management team announced the company's decision to lay off about 100 pilots and engineers in a matter of weeks. Like Airpiece alluded, the negative impact of the pandemic is also forcing it to downsize. Emmanuel was one of those affected. He tells me that after nationals requested for pay parity with expert rates, the company continued to pay them in Naira at an exchange rate unfair to the nationals, while they paid expert rates in dollars. The experts were paid in uh, dollars as usual, so they could change at a, from uh, with, uh, from any euro they change, you know, at whatever rate they want, you know. But for us, the company was our euro they change. We are not asking for pay increase or salary increase, so to say. We are just asking for the right exchange rate to be paid. Now, I'll give you an instance. The company 
speeds at three, four, five. Then when our pilots and engineers buy tickets, when company helps them to buy tickets, this same company charges them at 460. And they expect them to pay from the 345. They pay them. The, on the company's intranet, they have a different figure. They have the standard figure there. There's the NAFX rate, CBN NAFX rate, which they could have paid as well. While arguments over exchange rates, redundancy packages, pay cuts, and other employer-employee related grievances may have degenerated into these job losses. The coronavirus pandemic has also contributed to forcing employers to cut down capacity while reducing operation costs. Bristol Helicopters in a statement stated its operation had been reduced by more than 50% due to the pandemic, and the company had to take a difficult decision to commence the exit of some of its pilots and engineers by way of redundancy. It maintains it is consulting with the Ministry of Labour and relevant unions to negotiate a fair and equitable redundancy package for affected individuals. In April, the International Air Transport Association, IATA, revealed that about 25 million jobs were at risk of disappearing following a decrease in demand for air travel amid the COVID-19 crisis. Two million of these jobs are estimated to come from Africa, with Nigeria expected to contribute about 124,000. Simon, Emmanuel and more than 160 others in Nigeria are now part of this projection. They are concerned that the continuous disengagement of aviation workers may potent danger for the industry. You will imagine a pilot and a school pilot discussing. We will be discussing things like this. Uh, people, they want to pay, they want to go to a bill, or they want to, they are not paid also, that kind of thing. And God forbid that you force their salary to a level where they will begin to look for other means of uh, income. Automatically, that will be a huge distraction, and the concentration will not be there. Airpiece declined to comment when we reached out to them, presenting its allegations. Meanwhile, the National Association of Aircraft Pilots and Engineers and the Air Transport Services Senior Staff Association of Nigeria are worried that this would mean hundreds of people will now join the already bloated labor markets. In the case of Bristol, the Ministry of Labor have stepped in and asked that the part back to status quo ante and the, uh, we will negotiate properly now the redundancies, the extent of the redundancy. For Airbus, actually, uh, there's a lot of stakeholders have advised and then the company is now willing to have a discussion with the unions uh, and hopefully uh, they will support it and we will see what, uh, what comes up. We know that this COVID has brought regrettable impact to us as a nation and it's not limited to Nigeria alone. So we should work hand in hand to see how we can mitigate it. But they felt well, if they, can, if they have not been making a profit, the workers can go and die. It shouldn't be that. In May, the International Air Transport Association called on the Nigerian government for aviation-specific financial relief measures to address the severe impact of COVID-19. But will this end the growing dissatisfaction amongst employees and disengaged workers while aiding the sector's recovery? We know that this is a state of emergency. It is a state of emergency and aviation should not be relegated to the background. So if we say we want to discuss, you are not forthcoming, and our staffs are dying, dying of hunger, psychological death. What do you expect us to do? Beyond providing relief packages for airlines to redeem the aviation sector, there may be a need for more inclusive conversation between airline owners and employees to avoid any impending standoff like education, media, health, and other critical sectors. Government palliatives are essential to saving businesses and critical to the overall recovery of Nigeria's economy in the face of the COVID-19 crisis. Ajoke Hulotzi, GIST Nigeria.